Well, that is about where it's going to sit. We're obviously going to tweak it and move it a little bit closer to the wall. Um, I got to get in there and start on the wiring that's going to go from the control box here over to the uh, junction box on the wall. Looking good, though. All right, so we're making some progress on the uh, new hide neck saw. And today I've been getting the electrical circuit run and I just got the machine wired up and running for the very first time. So I thought I'd give you a little update and uh, show you that. We'll go ahead and fire it up so you can see it running. I'm not finished with it yet though. We're not fully in position. I still gotta add coolant. And I've actually gotta do some shuffling back here. I'm gonna do some rearranging back here to uh, allow me to have a little bit more access there to the saw. I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. So we, uh, we've got the circuit run. I come out of this disconnect right here and uh, run me a line over, put a junction box on the wall, and then I made up a uh, pigtail using the, uh, this is top flex, you know, but the flexible non-metallic conduit, pulled wires through it, got her all hooked in right here, and we are ready to roll. So it took me a minute to figure out what I was doing wrong or what I have not done correctly yet because I couldn't get the saw to operate whenever I first wired it up. Now I wasn't sure what was going on. Went back to the book, reread some things, and then noticed again. So this is your uh, blade tensioner right here. This is what tightens up the bandsaw blade. And you actually have a hydraulic pressure gauge right here that indicates how much pressure you have on that blade. You also have a switch here connected to that hydraulic gauge. If you don't have enough pressure on this gauge right here, it will not allow the motor to uh, turn on, so it won't run. It was at 20 bar whenever I received the, the machine, and I didn't think about tightening it up. And then when I read that book again, it says to tighten it to 70 bar, so we're not quite at 70 bar yet, we're at 60. But I adjusted it up to uh, 60 tried it again and it worked so that's all it was was i didn't have it tight enough there okay so we'll go ahead and fire it up for you this is your speed control here it's just a two speed uh setting you got slow and fast or low and high we're going to use the low setting right there this is a different setting right here that, that allows you to operate it more in a manual position with a momentary switch here but we're just going to use, I uh, forget the two modes. you got semi-automatic and dynamic as the two. All right, so this is your switch. We'll go ahead and activate it. There we go. I have not added coolant yet, so I need to do that also. And then we'll go ahead and uh, activate the hydraulic feed. So this is your speed control, just a hydraulic valve. It is not hitting the handle, by the way. It just does miss that. So there we go. Once it goes down and shuts off, you can just pick it right back up, hit the, hit the switch again, and let it feed. All right, now, you can also, I wanna to talk to you later about this other setting right here, but if you have it up and you, and you wanna bring it down, you can uh, turn that switch on right there or switch it over to that mode and you can bring it down. So that's a that's an easy way to bring the blade down uh, closer to your work where, where you want it without having to turn the, the machine on itself. Uh, but this acts as a momentary switch as well. You have to, this spring back here on the back of the machine, so where it's at now is the semi-automatic and then um, whenever you bring the spring back, all the way to this position right here. So that's gonna be for your manual. I'll just go ahead and show you that. We'll bring it back. And that changes the head weight of the, uh, you know, the bandsaw right here. So it's a lot lighter. So once you go to the uh, manual mode like that, it's a lot easier to manipulate the saw right there. If you want to do some manual type cutting operations and operate it manually like that okay so i'll go ahead and uh, change that back to where i had it right there and from here i'm just going to go ahead and start getting the uh getting all the cosmoline cleaned off of it and what i need to do 
I really, <clears throat> this rotary vent, I wish I could get it to the garage, but I have no way to get it out there because I've got the dirt out there. I, I have nowhere else to put it except for right up in here. But I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and just take this rotary vent and my toolbox right there and just swap places with it. Because when I put this in place to open up the door there to change the blade, this is going to be in the way. So I think if I just move this over there and then move the toolbox over, the toolbox will not be in the way of that guard right there. And I've got this where I can pick it up with my pallet jack and just quickly move it. I've also got to get the uh, feet ordered. Right now I've just got some 3 8 bolts in there holding it up. And I'm going to get some proper machinery uh, feet to go in those as well. All right, so I think that's about it. That's where we're at right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cleaned up and uh, get this thing finished up in position. And I think I wanna bring you back whenever we're ready to make our first cuts, okay? Okay, so a little update of where we're at. You can see that now we've got the uh, toolbox and the hardware rotary bin here kind of swap places. And I think this is gonna work out pretty good. It's definitely closer to the press than what I want it to be, but it's still it'll still work. I can still get in here and uh, crank this handle right here to raise and lower the table of the press. So that's gonna work out. And going back to what I said about moving this, I know that this could be moved. It's not that it's impossible to move it out there, but my concrete, both where the doorway is and outside the, the, the big door there, it's, it's a big drop off down. And then I got grass out there going over to that. Uh, so just getting this out there would be pretty labor intensive and you got to be really careful because this is such a top heavy piece and I do not want to unload all these drawers. That's just that would take a week to get this unloaded, organized, move everything and put it back in there. So this is going to stay here for now. So anyway, back to the saw. We've got it about in the position that I want it and I've got this uh, door to where if I go to uh, change the blade, we can go ahead and pull the door out right there and you can see we're clearing right there we can go ahead and flip it all the way up there is a latch built onto the saw right here that you can use to uh, secure the the door all the way uh, from closing on you so we can change out our blade no problem there okay and then we've got it positioned back to where if i have a long work piece going in the vise and coming out this way it will clear this as well okay so that's going to work out pretty good i got to do a little bit more organizing over there so that i can get the smart washer put back in its place over there and then we'll start getting this all cleaned up All right, so this is what we're using to uh, do the cleanup on the saw and, of course, the sure shot. I still have a lot of folks that ask me about this, so I just keep sharing it so everybody's informed. It's a sure shot made by Milwaukee Sprayer, and this is working really good, this uh, CRC heavy-duty degreaser. So just fill it up to about somewhere about in this area right here it's actually about a quart all right and then just uh i've got the the air compressor on the tank topped off and i just equalize the pressure in the bottle here i have a really bad uh, air chuck that's why it's leaking there but, and then once you do well i guess i didn't get it at all did i We're going to try it again so the little tip right there was actually clogged up i couldn't see through it so i just got my torch tip cleaners and cleaned it out and we'll put this piece back in there screw that back on just snug it up all right put the cap back on with the seal cap it off again there we go perfect 
I'm going to get the uh, bulk of the grease off here first, the thick stuff, and then we'll uh, give her a good wipe down with the degreaser. I just finished getting the end feed roller and this support here level with the uh, vice base there. Just using this big parallel. We got that roller where that parallel just touches it and rolls across. And this bar, this bar right here is supporting the, uh, the material there as well. So that should work out real nice where it's at. And uh, this thing is made so that you can, you can actually buy the, uh, you know, the roller frames and mount it right here to the saw itself. All right, let's show you a couple of the features of the vise. All right, so you got the uh, you know conventional screw vise with the handle right there. It looks like I might need to do a little, a little adjusting on a gib in there. These guys right here, but this thing has a quick action feature on there where it actually releases the half nut with this lever right here. So you can push this down. All right spring loaded by the way so just push it down in the vise so you can pull it all the way back or push it all the way in just like that and position it where you need lock it in and then go ahead and screw it there all right so it also goes over to this side of the uh, machine as well so if you want to you know, kick the uh, the cutting head around here to this side to cut your angle. You can go ahead. There's a lock right up underneath here. You may not be able to see it, but there's a lock handle. All right, just loosen that guy right there. Make sure it's not tight. All right, and we can slide it right on across to the other side right there. All right, slide it over here. Make sure that the vice jaw is clear in the uh, the blade there, and just lock her lock her back in. So it's called a double mitering because you can move this uh, cutting head to either side. So to do that, loosen the lock handle, which I didn't have it locked there. Take this guy and just pull it out, turn it a little bit to keep it locked out there. And then you can rotate this guy around to whatever angle that you want. Let me see what's going on back here. Oh, that was just the power cord, the conduit there rubbing on it. So. You want to take it around to say 45 we'll go ahead and release this guy and it'll click in to exactly 45 degrees right there they all you can do i believe it was 30 45 and 60 degrees is where it where it kicks in and go ahead and cut whatever angle you want so if you want something on that's not on that pin to location you can just simply just lock it in if you want to do you know say 44 degrees right there if you want to cut you know for a frame you can lock it in right there or just whatever you want all right take it back to zero and then that will lock. this will lock back in or you want to set it up for the other side just do the same exact thing go ahead and pull this pin rotate it around this side will go to uh, 45 degrees when you kick it around here to the right side it will go all the way to 60 degrees so pull it on around here to whatever whatever angle you want right Let's just say right there, 30 degrees, and then you can bring your, uh, where's it at? It's right here. Loosen this guy up. You bring your vise over to this side. Clamp in your workpiece and do your cuts. Pretty nice. I love that right there. Hey, you can quickly adjust the uh, support for the blade out here. Loosen this guy right there. And this is just a handle back here. You can take this and pull it all the way back for whatever size workpiece that you want to put in there to clear it or push it all the way in. There's a roll pin back here to keep it from going all the way out. Just position it where you want it. Lock it in. We got a fresh bucket, five gallon pail full of uh, brand new soluble cutting oil. We got the uh, sump vacuumed out with the chips and uh, with the dust and the chips, I mean. We're going to fill her up. So 
So that's about five gallons there. I was just judging it by sight, but the book says that the uh, sump is uh, 13 liters, but that looks, it looks a little low for 13 liters to me. But we're gonna go with that. We're gonna start with five gallons, and I think that's gonna be just enough. All right, let's give it a try with the coolant in there now. And this is the cleanest this saw will ever be in its life. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's, let's give it a shot. I gotta put it in speed first. There we go. All right, looks like it'll really flood it. You can really put the coolant to it. Nice. We're ready to make a, uh, a cut on it. I wanted to uh, point this guy out right here. So this is a piece that was actually in the vise. Whenever I first loosened the vise and opened it up, I saw this in there. And actually, whenever I saw it, this was the side I looked at and didn't think nothing of it and kind of you know set it to the side. But this must be a test piece that they cut with the saw. There was a tag on the, on the saw. You probably saw it earlier in the video. There was a tag there that said it was inspected and tested. So they must have made a test cut and then clean it up, you know, afterwards. So they've got some measurements wrote on there. So it must be thousandths of an inch, 171, 176, 174, and 175. So according to this piece, they probably measure it with some calipers. They're within four thousandths of being parallel on that cut right there. That's promising news to me. Very excited about having a nice straight cutting saw. So I'm gonna get a piece of material and put it in there. We'll, we'll start a cut. Probably gonna use this piece of cold rolled right here. It's a nice big piece and we'll just cut a little thin um, slice off the end of it. We'll probably make two cuts with it and then measure it and see what kind of, um, what kind of tolerance we're getting with it. All right, that, this uh, side is, is definitely going to be crooked because that was cut with the do-off. So let's, uh, we'll, let's make one cut. We're going to make one cut right there, and then we'll make a second cut and measure the second one. So to start off, I'm going to feed it kind of light. And uh, this is, I know it's a brand new blade. So we'll just feed it kind of light on there and help break the blade in at the same time. All right. Just take a light feed cut on it there. first cut looks good all right let's cut one more disc I am just going to eyeball a quarter inch here with my scale and just for fun to see how close I can get it really doesn't even matter here but it looks like it's about 
on the quarter inch line. Tighten the vise up. All right, let's do it. Slow the feed rate down. We're just let, we're let, letting it feed about half of your normal feed rate when the saw when the saw blade is brand new. There's our disc. Find my rag. Just looking at it by sight, looks pretty square. We'll go get my uh, we'll get my calipers and see how parallel we cut it. All right, here's our very first test puck that we cut out on the uh, the hide mech. I cut the end off to square it up, and then this is the actual. So this is the first and second cut right here. Let's go ahead and give it a measurement to see where we're at. That's the bottom right there. So here's the top. So 239, 240. There's the bottom. There's the little bird left on it. Two forty. You can see I'm wiggling it there. Two forty. So it just depends on where you catch it. There, look at that. Two forty. Couldn't be happy with that. That is a nice square piece of material cut with the hide mech. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be about it for today. We got this all operational. I can come over here and cut some material with it. So the the next phase uh, from here, as I said, I need to put the uh, the feet on it there. So. I'm gonna get those ordered. I still haven't got them ordered as of uh, recording this, but we're gonna go ahead and get some feet ordered for it. I wanna get those mounted on there and actually get it leveled up real good. And then uh, as far as uh, anything else goes, I still gotta hook up the mist coolant right there. So we still gotta do that, but we got a good operating saw and it's cutting nice and square and I'm as happy as I can be. All right, so we'll bring you back and show you some more later.